So we see this picture, right, of the hybrid cloud. And we've talked about how we do that for the private cloud. So let's look over at the public cloud and let's dig into this a little bit more deeply. You know, we're taking this incredible power of the VMware Cloud Foundation and making it available for the leading cloud providers in the world. And with that, the partnership that we announced almost two years ago with Amazon and on the stage last year, we announced our first generation of products. No better example of the hybrid cloud. And for that, it's my pleasure to bring to stage my friend, my partner, the CEO of AWS. Please welcome Andy Jassy. Thank you, Andy. You know, you honor us with your presence. You know, and it really is a pleasure to be able to come in front of this audience and talk about what our teams have accomplished together over the last uh, year. You know, can you give us some perspective on that, Andy, and what customers are doing with this? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here with all of you. Uh, you know, the offering that we have together, VMware Cloud and AWS, is very appealing to customers because it allows them to use the same software they've been using to manage their infrastructure for years to be able to deploy it in AWS, and we see a lot of customer momentum and a lot of customers using it. You see it in every imaginable vertical business segment. In transportation, you see it with Stagecoach and media and entertainment. You see it with Discovery Communications. In education, MIT and Caltech and consulting, Accenture and Cognizant and DXC. You see it in every imaginable vertical business segment and the number of customers using the offering is doubling every quarter. So people are really excited about it. And I think that probably the number one use case we see so far, although there are a lot of them, is customers who are looking to migrate on-premises applications to the cloud. And a good example of that is MIT, where they're right now in the process of migrating. In fact, they just did migrate 3,000 VMs from their data centers to VMware Cloud and AWS. And this would have taken them years before to do in the past, but they did it in just three months. Yeah, it was really, really spectacular. And they're just a fun company and you know, to work with and the team there. But we're also seeing uh, other use cases as well. And you know, probably the second most uh, common example is, well, say, on-demand capabilities for things like disaster recovery. And we have great examples of customers using that. And one in particular is uh, Brinks. Right, everybody knows that brings security trucks and you know armor trucks coming by, and they had a critical need to retire a secondary data center that they were using, you know, for DR. So we quickly built a DR protection environment for 600 VMs. You know, they migrated their mission critical workloads, and voila, stable and consistent DR. And now they're eliminating that site and looking for other migrations yeah. as well. They really saved 10 to 15 percent in the oh, process yeah. of doing it. It was just a great. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I believe, Andy. You know, customers should never spend capital on DR ever again with this kind of capability in place. It is just that game changing. You know, and you know, obviously we've been working on expanding our reach. You know, we promised to make the service available a year ago with the global footprint of uh, Amazon, and now we've delivered on that promise. And in fact, today or yesterday, if you're an Aussie, right uh, down under, we announced in Sydney uh, as well. And uh, now we're in US, Europe, and in uh, APJ. Yeah, it's really, I mean, it's very exciting. Of course, Australia is one of the most virtualized places in the world. And, and it's pretty remarkable how fast European customers have started using the offering, too, in just the quarter that's been out there. And probably of the many requests customers have had and you've had, uh, probably the number one request has been that we make the offering available in all the regions the AWS has regions. And, I can tell you by the end of 2019, we'll largely be there, including with GovCloud. So GovCloud- Oh yeah, you guys have been, that's been huge for you guys. Yeah, it's a government only region that we have that a lot of federal government workloads live in. And we are pretty close together having the offering uh, FedRAMP authority to operate, which is a big deal and a game changer for governments because then they'll be able to use the familiar tools they use in VMware not just to run their workloads on premises, but also on the cloud as well with the data privacy requirements and security requirements they need. So it's a real game changer for government too. Yeah, and as you can see by the picture here, basically before the end of next year, everywhere that you are and have an availability zone, we're going to be there running on top Giddy of up. you. Yeah, let's get with it. <laughs> okay, we're a team. Go faster, okay. Right? <laughs> you know, and 
you know, it's not just making it available, but this pace of innovation. And, you know, you guys have really taught us a few things uh, in this respect. And since we went live in the Oregon region, you know, we've been on a quarterly cadence of major releases. M2 was really about mission critical at scale, and we added our second region. We added our hybrid cloud extension. With uh, M3, we moved the global rollout, and we launched uh, in Europe. With uh, M4, we really added a lot of these you know, mission critical governance aspects, uh, started to attack all of the industry certifications. And today, we're announcing M5, right? You know, and uh, you know, with that, uh, I, I think we have this little cool thing that we're doing with EBS and storage. Yeah, well, two, you know, two of the most important priorities for customers are cost and performance. And so we have a couple things to talk about today that we're bringing to you that I think hit both of those. On the storage side, we've combined the elasticity of Amazon Elastic Block Store, or EBS, with VMware's v vSAN, and we've provided now a, a storage option that you'll be able to use that is much, it's very high capacity and much more cost effective. And you'll start to see this initially on the VMware Cloud and AWS R5 instances, which are our compute instances that are memory optimized. And so this will change the cost equation. You'll be able to use EBS by default, and it'll be much more cost effective for storage or memory intensive workloads. Um, it's, it's something that you guys have asked for, it's been very frequently requested, and it, it hits preview today. And then the other thing is that we've worked really hard together to integrate VMware's NSX along with AWS's Direct Connect to have a private, even higher performance connectivity between on premises and the cloud. So, you know, very, very exciting new capabilities that show deep integration between the companies. Yeah, you know, and that aspect of the deep integrations has tr re really been the thing that we committed to. You know, we have large engineering teams that are working literally every day, right, on bringing together and how do we fuse these platforms together at a deep, right, and intimate way so that we can deliver new services just like Elastic DRS and the uh, vSAN EBS, really powerful uh, capabilities. And that pace of innovation continues. So M next, maybe M, maybe six, I don't know, we'll see, <laughs> right? You know, but uh, we're continuing this toward pace of innovation, you know, completing all of the capabilities of NSX, you know, full integration for all of the Direct Connect uh, capabilities, really expanding that, you know, improving license capabilities on the platform. We'll be adding PKS on top of, for expanded developer uh, capabilities. So just, oh, thank you. Uh, I, I think that was formerly known as Storage Chad. So anyway, right? Uh, and you know, we're continuing this pace of innovation uh, going forward. But I think we also have a few other things to talk about today, Andy. Yeah, I think we have some news that hopefully people here will be pretty excited about. Uh, you know, we have a, a pretty big database business in AWS, and it's it's both on the relational and on the non-relational side. And the business is billions of dollars in revenue for us. And on the relational side. We have a service called Amazon Relational Database Service, or Amazon RDS, that um, we have hundreds of thousands of customers using because it makes it much easier for them to set up, operate, and scale their databases. And so many companies now are operating in hybrid mode and will be for a while, and a lot of those customers have asked us, can you give us the ease of manageability of those databases, but on premises? And so we talked about it, and we thought about it, and we worked with our partners in VMware, and I'm excited to announce today, right now, Amazon RDS on VMware. And so that will bring all the capabilities of Amazon RDS to VMware's customers for their on-premises environments. And so what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to provision databases. You'll be able to scale the compute or the memory or the storage for those database instances. You'll be able to patch the operating system or database engines. You'll be able to create re read replicas to scale your database reads, and you can deploy those replicas either on premises or in AWS. You'll be able to deploy in high, high availability configuration by replicating the data to different VMware clusters. You'll be able to create online backups that either live on premises or in AWS, and then you'll be able to take all those databases, and if you eventually want to move them to AWS, you'll be able to do so rather easily. You have a pretty smooth path. This is going to be available in a few months. It'll be available on Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres, and MariaDB. I think it's very exciting for our customers, and I think it's also a good example of where we're continuing to deepen the partnership and listen to what customers want and then innovate on their behalf. Absolutely. Thank you, Andy. It is thrilling to see this.
You know, and as we said when we began the partnership, it was a deep integration of our offerings and our go-to-market, but also building this bi-directional hybrid highway to give customers the capabilities where they want it. Cloud, on-premise, right? On-premise to the cloud, it really is a unique uh, partnership that we've built, the momentum we're feeling to our customer base and the cool innovations that we're doing. Andy, thank you so much for joining yeah, us here for at VMworld 2018. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Great to see you. Thank you.